I'm going to leave all this in now. <laughs> Rolling with Mike Sundance Q&A. That was... right. Hi, I'm Mike Plant, a senior programmer for short film at the Sundance Film Festival. And you've just watched Stranger Than Rotterdam with Sarah Driver. Welcome to the Q&A. And I'm here with the filmmakers and Sarah. If you could uh, say your name and what you did on the film. And we'll start with you, Noah. Uh... I'm Noah Kloster, and I co-directed, co-animated, and co-puppeted the <laughs> film. And um, this is our subject, Sarah Driver. What did you do, Sarah? I told a true story. It's a story. And I'm um, Louis. Uh, my brother over here is uh, my brother. <laughs> and uh, I did everything he did. Uh, I'm the other co-part of all you of You edited that. it. Oh, and I edited it, too. I didn't include that uh, credit in there because I just hate it when the director has just too many credits in the sequence. So it's just, you know, I just need to, you know, get through it. Louis is like more of a computer guy than I am. So he's has his fingers in the computer more. And you, Mike, you make a good Robert Osborne impersonator. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's a sweater. Um, do you guys... <laughs> Bobby do you guys always make do you guys always make films together is this something you started when you were kids oh yeah i, I mean um this is our Sick. like sixth serious animation we've made together but we've been i we probably have 200 films under our belt making together but um they they weren't animations and mo that. and most of them were about like pooping or farting <laughs> or thanks no <laughs> no cuz we started when we were like 5 and 8 when that was the pinnacle of, of comedy. We'll still make films about pooping and farting, maybe, but um, that was when we were much younger. And, uh, and now we make films okay. about uh, cock sucking and uh, <laughs> porn smuggling. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's really changed. And Sarah, judging from this last minute, people are probably wondering how you convinced them to be in a film of theirs. How did they approach you? Um, I don't, you know, I met them when I was doing a, a lecture at Lincoln Center. I don't mm -hmm. remember even what it was about. It was about Boom For Real. Yeah, you're talking oh, about Boom For Real. Oh, okay, I was talking about my film Boom For Real, and it was part of the New York Film Festival, and there were these two kids sitting in the audience, Louie and Noah. Way in the back. And I had seen their film about Chris Choi, and Chris Choi used to be my boss at NYU when I taught there in the early 90s. And so I asked who, you know, who are the kids that made the Chris Joy movie? Yeah, she said that at the very end of her Q&A, talking to us, and she looked down at like this leaflet that she's handed, like uh, it breaks down who, uh, who, because it was at the Artist Academy at New York Film Festival that Noah and I were part of, and she, she like goes, is a Louis Kloster here? And I thought like she was going to be like, well, you left your ID in the lobby. I just found, here, come down here and take it from me. But I mean, she, hearing Sarah even say Louis, my brother's name was just like, crazy because we were sitting in the back and it was like i like to think it was like 10 30 but probably it was like 11 in the morning no we it probably felt to us like it was 8 a.m yeah but it was it was probably around noon and we were sitting in the back and we were thinking how cool sarah was but we were just like so tired and we were just like damn she's so cool and, and all the other filmmakers in front of us were just dying to rush the stage afterwards to talk to you remember there's like a buzz in the air and no and i were a little tired and in the back we're like there's no chance but this lady is one of the coolest people on planet earth <laughs> and then you, you cut the shit and you're just like who's louis Kloster?" and i go me and you go she says here you made the christine Choi film and i go yeah and you go well how the hell is she because <laughs> you had worked under her and, and so then we had this conversation kind of over this huge swath of people and we we're just yelling like yeah we made the film why do you like it you know and uh and then eugene came in and he was like why don't you guys take this outside and then so outside the theater we kind of chatted and that's how we got to know each other and then and then we then, and then we next time we saw her is because we stalked her and found her at the howl uh, uh gallery opening she had a showing there uh basquiat related for the Mm -hmm. Boom for real release. So we showed up and, and then we, this was after a few friendly emails and asked her if we could make the film. If we could make a film with her. And, it, and she, I think you said yes there. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got me when I was probably really overwhelmed. Because <laughs> that was a crazy opening. Yeah. There was like no, a, line really a line and everything. Yeah. It was, all the, it was all the artists who had given me archival material for Boom for Real. 
And, I, and it was a way to show how Basquiat's community helped shape him. It was one of the best. And there was, a, bo- and there was like to. a Basquiat there too. Yeah. At the, at the, it was so cool. With the football, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. So Sarah, was it your idea to tell this particular story then? Well, because I had seen their film about Chris Choi and smuggling. So I just, I thought of like a smuggling theme. So um, I have a, you know, I, and, and it's a true story. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I don't know. And then I told them and then we started playing with it. And then we started over the pandemic, we started doing Zoom uh, calls and, um, and then they drop off the mic that had been, they, they'd clean everything. It all smelled like cleaner. And they and they put it in a plastic bag and leave it. You know, I'd let them in, and then they'd leave it, and we'd be very far from each other during the whole lockdown. And and it was a great process. It was a great. It was so fun to work with them because they're both cinephiles. They both know the history of cinema, which is so refreshing to you know talk to pe- young younger people about the history of old, cinema. Old stuff. Old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and. Ye old stuff. That's very flattering to hear from Sarah yeah. because I I, I, think, I feel like an idiot when I'm talking about films with her because she's seen so <laughs> much more. To so to hear I'm you so say that, so much older. I've had uh, so much more time. <laughs> 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 like we were just talking about on the Bowery before this Q and A. I'm just like I've, that sounds like a film that I probably should have seen by now. And uh, yeah, but uh, that's very sweet. And um, and also they do their research. They really do their research. You know, I was very impressed how they handled Robert, how they handled the whole, you know, thing with the this Rolling Stones. And, you know, they had really, and I, I loved, I actually saw June Leaf earlier today, who's Robert Frank's widow. And, uh, and I was telling her about the cartoon, which I want to show to her. And I told her that the guys asked me, well, just, did Robert or Frank ever wear a shirt when he was in Nova Scotia? <laughs> <laughs> and then that's why they made yeah. the cartoon of Robert without a shirt. <laughs> and I told June that today, and she started laughing. <laughs> we, we, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I, so I had to do a lot of research on, on like how to draw all the characters in the mid 80s. So I had, I asked Sarah for a lot of pictures of herself at that time, a lot of pictures of Jim, a lot of pictures of Robert. Well, I didn't, so I, so I mostly Googled all the pictures of Robert. And so I, Got. We saw Don't Blink. Yeah, we saw that Don't, was a great Don't Blink is a yeah. great documentary. And they him. shoot a lot up in Nova Scotia. Yeah. yeah, and so we got a lot of the interior ideas of what the Nova Scotia house looks like from that film. But so I had this nice a collection of Robert photos, but every time, no matter what year, this was could be out of the 80s, but whenever you type in Robert Frank Nova Scotia, all the pictures would be of him shirtless. <laughs> and so, I don't know, maybe he's just, it's like a level of comfort up there where he could just walk around without a shirt. But, um, so it's really it's, cold, isn't it? Well, in the summer. Yeah, I guess in, in the, the summer. summer, yeah. So then, um, so I took 80s Robert Frank head and put it on, um, so 80s, I, I don't know what Maybe 1990s, 90s, 90s body, body I don't know. <laughs> so there's a lot of Frankensteining with everyone. Um, don't give away don't give away all your secrets okay yeah. well just frankenstein <laughs> frankenstein is a good google image search big secret <laughs> <laughs> why do you is this a style you had since you were kids and you figure why change it or um how did you get to do you know you, i've always we've seen your most recent films the ones we've shown and they're all this very lovely super homegrown but on purpose puppetry that that's really endearing we're um you're We're, very varied. I think your style is so varied. If you look at the David Godless, it's very different than the Chris Choi. Thanks. You know? I guess we always try to do something different, but what always is like, I guess, a thread of aesthetic is we don't care if people can watch it and then reverse engineer how we made it. Because those are my f- favorite things to watch. Or, or like, I just love being able to watch kind of art, more artsy and craftsy type things because it it scratches another itch while I'm watching it of like figuring out while I'm following a story of like also how they made it, you know, like you can see what material that was made out of in the back and you're like, Oh, there's cardboard strewn across the streets all over New York. That would be really cheap. Or like, there's just something that kind of gets me going about watching an animation that's much more tactile and you can 
you see the glue marks and you see the painting and you see the and you just see all you know staples sticking out of things and stuff and um it's just i don't know it is insp- watching those things also inspires me to to you know do it yourself yeah like oh they did that why can't i and i hope people feel that watching our stuff i guess yeah so there really is no big secret <laughs> yeah, we want everyone to know our secrets. Just yeah. do it. <laughs> just... You got to find out where to find uh, M80s to blow up miniature Robert Frank doors. That's the secret. Where do we get our fireworks? <laughs> that was a tricky shot. You did it well. Thanks. <laughs> um, and you, but, uh, you have you have some of the stars of the film with you there on the table, oh, right? Yeah. That's right. Well, we have Sarah in the <laughs> flash here. <laughs> That's um, voiceover, voiceover acting. We should we have, see if we can get Sarah Driver and Sarah Driver paper in the, at the same. same size in the frame. Let's see. <laughs> Closer, Noah? <Yep. laughs> wait, wait, I'll go back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this will be good. Okay. Yeah, further back, Noah? There. Okay. And then come over here, Sarah. Okay. The white side by first. side. There. Wow. Nope. Oh, closer? She hasn't changed much since 1982. Yep. There she is. And then the hand can move. Oh. <laughs> this is the one where she's carrying the film uh, canister, and there's. They get all so tangled up, and these have been in storage since um, maybe March or May. Jim, we got re- May. So yeah, we brought a whole tangled. bag of them, and I mean we have varying sizes. Um, so if like the set was. We didn't follow a particular scale. And then, my, oh. and then I have the film can. Oh yeah, we put this. This was in a, our thank you we, for letting us make this film. We put this in a uh, in a baseball um, case, and this is the miniature with the miniature lock. And then we wrote um, the last existing print of Cocksucker Blues. Yes. And there's actually a, a film reel inside. Yeah, there's the can. a little film reel within here, so. It's very. They do everything very. Uh, I guess, I guess. Perfectionist, but then there's like a big rip out of the top here that we just don't care about. Well, that's that's a natural patina. (laughs) And then we have the uh, airplane um, cigarette. Oh, that's just right there. Oh, yeah. Then we have the flying in the 80s was like flying in a big cigarette. And for scale, this is, I don't know what scale this would be. God, and we loaded this thing up with maybe 10 cigarettes to get the right amount of smoke coming out of it. Yeah, and this is made from uh, LaCroix, or beer, or LaCroix cans. And so you could have, like, a little fire in here, and it wouldn't burn the paper because there's, like, a aluminum, aluminum shield. shield. So the the core of the film, I mean, it's super fun, but it's, it's especially, a, it's such a good film for film festivals, obviously. I mean, Sarah, you've you've been in this game a lot longer than the rest of us, and this idea of the word independent has gotten so co-opted and changed. What does the word when you hear it now? What kind of thoughts do you do you get when people throw around the word independent film? Well, it's 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 got so many contexts, and I mean, you know, Harvey Weinstein said he financed independent film. He was an independent producer. Um, you know, it's been sort of uh, the term d- doesn't really speak in this. It's such a vast range of things now that are considered independent. Um, like these guys, handmade films to me are independent films. Like these films, like Stranger oh. Than Paradise. Made with small crews, made without the intention of a profit at the end, but driven by the need to get ideas out. I mean, we're just oozing the ideas out. <laughs> Uh, to me, independent means anything other than something that that's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> where they don't talk about content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no con. It's no not. We're not content. making content here. Yeah, content. I don't or, know. You know, I think I think that film is such a new art form, and it's been so. It hasn't been investigated as a storytelling method to its fullest extent, yeah. and unfortunately. Our industry has been taken over by lawyers and bankers who all want everything to be sort of like safe and, you know, very like, what is it like that's already been made? Well, the films that excite me are the ones that don't remind me of any films that were ever made again, that do use the language of cinema in a new way, in an interesting way, even if it doesn't succeed, that they're trying (laughs) something. Yeah. Wow. 
It feels so good to be sitting next to Sarah Driver. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'd, I don't know what the hell I'd be saying. I don't know. I would, I'd be trying to babble on about everything that Sarah just said, but I, uh, but it would come out horribly. It would, I, it would be babbling for me. It would just be, <laughs> no. You guys we'd have to just t- t- turn off the mic. <laughs> be. <laughs> do we know? Do we know if Robert Frank did end up seeing Stranger Than Paradise? Oh, I, I'm sure Robert saw Stranger Than Paradise. He, he saw it. Um, in a, you know, we first edited it, uh, the first half hour was edited on an upright moviola. And we had it, we rented it, and it was in our tenement apartment. And we had a table we found on the street, because in New York, on Tuesday nights, people used to be able to put their furniture out on the street. And that's how we furnished our places. And we found this wonderful table, and we drilled holes, holes in it for our rewinds. And we had the moviola and the rewinds. And I remember Robert coming up and watching it on the moviola the first half hour. And then he saw he saw the full film. I'm not sure. Maybe um, maybe he saw it at the New York Film Festival. I don't remember where he saw it. But Robert was a good friend, and he lived in the neighborhood. And his wife, his widow, June Leap, continues to be a very good friend. I remember... Um... Uh, a mutual friend that all three of us have is David Godless, and he recited a story of watching it at Danceteria the first half hour. Right. And um, he recalled Sarah and Jim running around asking pals for money to maybe make it into a feature, but it wasn't happening there. And so, I Nobody mean... Nobody had any money. Yeah. So that could have been like almost <laughs> like a, a little pre... That could be almost like a little tiny prequel to Stranger in Rotterdam being like, well, we didn't make any money at, at Danceteria. I got to go to Rotterdam. <laughs> asking, all, asking all these kids for money. Asking yeah. all these all of us art are kids. Broke. Yeah. Yeah, they're all broke. That's right. Because You Are Not I was showing at uh, the public theater. Fabiana Canosa was the programmer of the public theater. They used to have a wonderful film program. So Danceteria was, I think, part of also You Are Not I was celebrated at the same time as the half hour of Stranger. But maybe that was a different party. I can't remember fun that would have been i know what i'd use my time time machine for now yeah go to that party and be like <laughs> and make sure no one gives yeah. them the money <laughs> don't <laughs> no one <laughs> maybe that's why they didn't get the money because you went back i in went time back like, and we need to make this film called stranger than rotterdam no i established a cover charge for the party so i take everyone's money at the door <laughs> And, and Noah and Louis, had you were you aware of the film Cocksucker Blues? Had you seen it before you were making this? We had never. Uh, no, it really struck me when she said, "I have a story about smuggling Cocksucker Blues," and I didn't. She, Sarah, when she told me, didn't even specify if it was a film. I mean, I, my mind was. I was like, I was what, like what the? <laughs> you smuggled a what? <laughs> But it was a real treat discovering what that was. And now I can talk about it like it's old hat. And that that caused us to go down a big Robert Frank wormhole. And, I mean, he's become... I I just knew the Americans, but I didn't know any of his film stuff. Didn't know any of his later stuff. So... Well, I remember Pull My Daisy was stolen at the Rotterdam Film Festival. One of the, the print of it. And everybody at Rotterdam was scared to tell Robert that the print had disappeared. And then Robert arrived and they... He, they told him that they couldn't find the print, that somebody had walked into the projection booth and taken Pull My Daisy. And he said, he got very delighted, and he said, oh, they liked it that much? That's incredible. <laughs> Someone out there loves the film that much? Yeah. <laughs> it's worth stealing? <laughs> and it's been, it's been tough that, that we have to go online. I was really looking forward to seeing this with, with other people. Because you assume with different generations in the crowd, you're going to have such great different responses. People who know the references and and younger audiences maybe don't know either. Oh, don't remind me. And, <laughs> and even even younger than you, yes. And then, but um, but you did have a chance to watch it with a crowd. Is that right? What was that like? Um. Well, we got to show a kind of a work in progress screening at Thessaloniki Film Festival. It's a doc festival in um. It's the second largest city in Greece. Um, it's Sarah, the best food. The best food. Probably better than Athens. Um, we really owe all of this to, to Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, yeah, Sarah got us in touch with Angliki, who um, is like our patron saint, like big boy. Um, and she, she said, uh, I hear you're making a film about Sarah. 
we'd like to show all of your movies, and then at the end of the block, we'll show the Sarah movie. We'll do a premiere of the Sarah film. She said, maybe, you know, if, if we can show it first, we'll, yeah, we'll offer you screening all your films as a retrospective. What do you say? And we said, stop right there. We'll I heard retrospective, it. and I was like, what the <laughs> like, what we're, the we're, not, <laughs> we're not that close to death yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. If everyone got the biggest kick out of us saying we have like a retrospective, yeah, people, people would like, start laughing like, oh my God, are you planning on retiring? And, um, yeah. but it was, uh, it was such an honor and to uh, watch, we had never see, sat down and watched all of our films. I mean, I wouldn't want to unless this was the case, but, um, and it was, it was outdoor because of COVID, but it was really cool because it was on the top of their modern art museum in Thessaloniki. And so it was like sitting on top of the MoMA watching your films and then the first night was really windy and it made the screen like warp in the wind and uh that that was like really fun because it, then it felt like our film was like 3d like it was coming at you we wouldn't have it any other way and then the second screening was less windy and that was great uh, that was awesome too um oh so you're translating how, how did the audience how did the audience like this one they 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 loved it. It was so fun, and it was really fun too because we got we got a translator too, and that was that was fun. We got to hear our uh, people laugh at our jokes twice because the the English the English speaking and then Greek speaking. They go to, but the biggest laugh out of every single one of our films we've ever made, the biggest laugh came on the line. Okay, can we give it away? Do we? This they've seen it already, right? Yeah. Okay. The biggest laugh was when that's when Jim Chalmers' hair turned white. <laughs> that was the biggest laugh, I, and it was huge. It was a r uproar. It was hilarious, and that was when I, I. Yeah, it's hard to believe his hair just turned white like that. But it, it, <laughs> it's, a, it's, the, it's also the start of independent cinema. Yeah. <laughs> the, so, uh, wrapping up, um, it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of perfect for our short film program because we're talking about a short that led to something cool. It's being told in a wonderful way through a short. Sarah, again, you've, you've got so much history with, with this art form. Um, what do you think of the short film today? It, it seems to be something different and new, but, but how does it seem to you, the world of short films? I, I, lo I love short films. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful uh, way to, 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 to discover things, you know, the language of cinema, to play with ideas and not have this huge machine that you need now to make a feature. Um, where you can make, you can have a story, you can pick up a camera and shoot it yourself uh, with shorts. The benefit of shorts is, is uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's very hopeful, um, I think, as, as a medium for, for film and the history of film. And, you know, I mean... Do you think you'll make, do you think you'll make any more? Um, well, I, I think we, we've got some, we've got this, some plots. Yeah, got we, some ideas. We've been we've been scheming in the back cave here, and because um, we really enjoy uh, working together. And, it was so much fun, and uh, it, it, it can't stop now. Sarah has uh, adopted us as her cartoon kids. Yeah, they're my, and I'm their cartoon parent. Yep, cartoon mom. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that bookshelf is going to open up into like a, a back corridor or something too. So, but you're not supposed to know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, the bookshelf opens up into, into, into a normal living room. We're in that dark corridor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new appliances and stuff. Nice. All right, we'll end with that perfect save. From well, we just want to say we love you at Sundance. We love Sarah Driver right here so much. Aww, like I said, I it, feels, kids. it feels cartoon kids. It feels so good to be sitting next to Sarah Driver always. <laughs> we love it. Uh, well, thanks to all of you making the film. It's such a joy for us to show it. And I hope hopefully... Hopefully everybody enjoyed it as much as we did. You're welcome. It's an honor for us. Thank, Thank you, you so much for inviting us.